Thank you for inviting <coughs> me and giving me the opportunity to talk about the system. Uh, it's a we be very focused on software, so less about facility. I'm not running the facility, I'm aware of the settings, but um, I can talk more about uh, the software and how it is running our facility. Um, so this is the layout of the, of the presentation. I will introduce the CPN if there's someone here that is not aware of the CPN. Um, I will talk about uh, automation and the streaming, what you can do within, with the CPN regarding this, then how it is integrated, how it is run at CMB, and then the current status and, and a summary of the features. Um, yeah, why is CPN? Um, well, I think the CPN can solve uh, these issues that are listed here. So you want to execute, execute complete workflows in an automated manner. You can do, well, complete automation uh, in an automated manner is not there yet. You can reach half of the workflow, but we are working on this. Um, also, you want, you want to do image processing on the fly, which is what we, we call streaming. You can do this. You can customize, create, and combine your own workflow at wish with a GUI and without the need of any scripting language or programming. Uh, you can combine EM software methods without programming as well. And this is something that we usually don't talk, but it's, it's in our philosophy, and is you can have future state-of-the-art methods available with one click. So we are continuously improving this, and, and it's not what we have now, but it's what we can have next year, for example. We are devoted to this. If next year, there's a nice method developed somewhere, uh, we will probably integrate it. Um, and also a very important thing is that you can, you can, if you want to know what you have done or you want to repeat what has, what has worked before. So CPN has put a lot of effort in, in, in keeping the log or traceability of your work and being able to redo your work. So in terms of workflow automation and streaming, uh, let me distinguish like these two concepts. So for me, automation is like software orchestration. So I'm, I'm going to have like software trying to automatically do things, yeah? And streaming for me is like processing while you are acquiring. Okay, you are getting uh, movies out of your microdose and you are start doing things and, and, and working on that. So those two things combined, I think are powerful for our facility. And it's basically what several facilities here are doing already. Um, so why you want to, this, to do this in the facility? I think I find three main, main reasons. <laughs> You want to get feedback of the acquisition. Yeah, as Marta said uh, yesterday, um, well, maybe you want to stop the, the acquisition. It's going really bad and you don't want to continue. Or another reason would be like feedback the user. I think the user is happy to see immediately what's going on and if he's getting or she's getting nice, uh, nice images and, and you can do something <laughs> with them maybe later. And I think it, it increases, uh, uh, it gives you another value for your service. So what can you do in facility? So this is, when, when I talk about the, what can you do is, some of them, for example, now what is released, you can do until here, particle extraction, yeah? This part would, would be available in the next release, which would be in, I don't know, early next year probably. Um, So for movie alignment, you have this available uh, method. You have motion core two, the old motion core. Uh, you have XMIP optical flow, XMIP cross correlation, and blur, and some of it. And whatever comes next year about movie alignment. Soon, um, Jose Miguel is working on Stockholm integrating uh, Reliant two. I'm, sh I'm sure we will have the the movie alignment from Reliant three. 
Um, CTF estimation, you have these uh, four options, CTF fine, GCTF, XMIP CTF, and CTF fine. And whatever new method appears as well. Um, picking, you have many options here. Um, none of them are fully automatic. I, I don't think any method is just nice to to just automatically without user intervention or, or some kind of user input to, to be able to work. Some of them need some training, like XMIP uh, automatic picking, rely on and, and G automax. They need uh, references, uh, so you need to provide them. This. If you don't have it, then you need to do something. Um, and some of those are parametric, so you need to enter some parameters that sometimes are tricky to find. But uh, Criolo, we are working on Criolo, and, and with the natural list, you will have Criolo as well. That seems to be at least easy to, to have in the, in the pipeline because it just requires a box size and probably nothing more. Extraction, you can do to, to you can use Reliant or XMIC to extract practical, nothing fancy there. And this is the first method I'm aware of that is able to do. 2D classification on a streaming. So with this, I means so this this will will come out uh, next with the next release, and this is able to to just incorporate new particles to its running um, classification, 2D classification. So it will be a pure uh, 2D streaming method. Obviously, there are options like uh, like Matt uh, show is you break the streaming flow and just start doing your static uh, 2D classification for 200 or 20,000 uh, particles, or these options are already in, or will be in the city. Additionally, um, because you can have different CTF uh, methods in your workflow. You have these kind of tools that are, are built in in the CPM. And those are, for example, the CTF consensus and filtering that they will help you. If you run two CTF methods, they will help you to prune and decide and, and, and clean your CTF set. So you can, this, this CTF consensus method will be able to, will, will, will filter, I say, uh, CTF based on a threshold for resolution or for um, astigmatism or the focus. So you want to filter those out. You can you can do it. Um, and also we compare two different CTF and if they match until certain resolution, that CTF will, will pass as well. Um, also for, for the picking, you can also have these these tools like okay I'm I'm not getting um, nice results with one picking, but you can pick with two, three different pickers and then try to run this consensus. So it will try to either take all of them, which is a more relaxed approach, but, or take only those particles that appear in two of them or in three of them in a more restrictive way. So it's a way of also pruning your or cleaning your, your, your sets to later and do something with, with cleaner data. Uh, also, you have uh, monitoring built in in the CPM. Um, so monitors are are like a process that are monitoring something, are, are checking that something is, how, how things are going during your your acquisition or your, your pattern and your workflow. Uh, there are three main monitors. One is the system monitor. It monitors GPU, different aspects of the of the CPU, like temperature, memory. Uh, I think there was something else. Uh, it's also um, monitors the, the machine memory, mm -hmm. the network activity, and the hard drive activity as well. Um, you can also monitor the CTF. You can monitor the focus, astigmatism, phase shift, and what the monitors they, they have built in is that they are able to 
to send you an alert. So you configure the email um, settings, the, the monitor will send you an email when, when some of these values goes above or below some threshold you can specify. Yeah. So it's something, I don't know, I don't know, some memory or I don't know, some CTF to focus goes above, uh, I don't know, some, sorry. some value, you can, you can get alerts. Uh, you can also monitor the, the gain, so this is coming from an XMIT method that is able to estimate the gain out of a micrograph. So you can monitor if the gain has has been changed during the acquisition. So you can you can do this um, I don't know, every 500 uh, movies, 100, uh, 1,000 movies maybe. Also you can get a, a report summary of the acquisition. Um, this is an HTML file, it's a self-contained folder that you can rsync to anywhere on the network. Um, and it tries to summarize uh, basic acquisition. You have some basic acquisition information. You have, here is the list of methods you are using the workflow. Um, and then you have some charts here. I couldn't show everything. Uh, but you have CTF monitoring the resolution and the refocus coverage. You can have movie game uh, charts, system monitor charts, and then a micrograph table with the, with the thumbnails of the micrograph, the shift plot, and, and, and all the values associated to the CTF as well. So, one of the strengths of, of the CPM. So I used to say, uh, and just in case it's not clear, CPM doesn't do image processing at all. It doesn't do. It doesn't have any nice method to to calculate anything. It just integrates software and organize your your work every day. Um, so CPM relies on the existing software that they do the the, the good job and, and and they are specialists on this, and it integrates. This software and, and many more. Uh, this is a snapshot of what is currently in our website. So CPM is sending just minimum statistics, if you agree with that. And basically, we want to know what, which of these methods are used. We are not sending data. We are not sending um, parameters. We, we are sending just a list of the methods you are using. If you agree, obviously. If you don't want to do it, that, that's fine. Uh, so these are the packages that are currently listed. Uh, so you can see Reliance, you can find, uh, you can see some in development, so you will see here is Fire, but this is because we are developing <coughs> Riolo, and this another, and this is something that I find is very interesting. This is a guy in Taiwan, I don't know who is, but he has started to develop integrating um, Isaac 2 in Seeker spontaneously, and I think this is what but we want this to happen in the future. So, asking developers or just engaging engaging with developers to just collaborate and contribute to CPM. Um, so there are lots of uh, you can see some ESRF or Dynamo, which are these are not methods, but these are monitors to integrate their workflow into their lane system. I will talk a bit more about this later. Um, So one one thing um, another good feature of the CPM uh, is like, it's easy to use. There is no programming uh, required unless you want to integrate uh, with your facility with some kind of software that that is also possible. But it gives you this interface with a with a um, graph that lays out all, all the, basically all, what you have done. So you have a very complex workflow and this is actually what you do even if you don't notice, you run commands line here and there, you, you try many things, you, everything is, is kept track. You can delete those, if you, you, you try some kind of, some branch and this is not more, you can delete the whole thing here. But if not, you, you, you have it there. 
So we, we, we keep track of everything. You have here a list of all the available methods you can use. And then here you're presented with a summary of what is selected. So for this relying to the classification, you have a summary of the input and the output. And some summary of the results. So you click in one of these boxes, this is just an example for the 2D classification. Obviously, you click in a different box, you will see a different window. Yeah? But for the 2D classification of Relion, uh, you have this general uh, section, this column for all the boxes. But this part below is just a specific for this uh, 2D classification. Uh, so it's asking you for the parameters for this 2D classification. So how are you going to combine methods? So from the, from the user point of view, it doesn't require an effort. You just link one box to the other, clicking on, on this magnifier here. And then as you can show, all the outputs that are available within your project that has a compatible output. So the 2D classification of Relion requires an in, a set of particles. So these are all the methods that are I'll put in certain particles, and you could use them. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if this is a reliant method, like this one, or a Scipion method, or, well, when you say Scipion, it's because we are doing some kind of subset or operations on the set, but nothing fancy. Yeah. Or an XMIP, or whatever um, package has produced a set of particles. <coughs> So um, you can also have wizards that will help you to decide on some of the parameters. So in this case, it's a wizard for the particle mass diameter of the 2D classification of Relion. So you have here your, your particles, and it will help you to decide what is the outer radius of, of or the one you want to, how, how it will look like if you choose uh, this value. Um, you can also, you also have uh, help incorporated into the attribute. So uh, quite often you have a nice description. Uh, probably this is coming from the Reliant manual. So you can see here straight away what Reliant says about this parameter. Uh, in some other cases, just it's one line. Uh, but anyway, um, but you have the help integrated there. And you can also view your, your input sets uh, with a viewer. So it will present your data like a, it has to move like a gallery or like a list. You can do filter, you can select and create a subset of particles. Um, these are, I think, simple operations you can do that otherwise uh, it might take some time I don't know, to, to do it. So making a subset and selecting only some of them it's as easy as selecting them and just clicking here. You have a, a new subset of particles ready to, to use. Um, sorry. Um, additionally, um, all of the protocols are linked to the articles. So you have a um, Uh, so you have here a method tab, and it will it will show the article associated with the method or articles, and uh, you can even export that to a bib text to a bib text. So you are working on your paper and you want to, and you have all your work done with the zip, and you can easily export that uh, that file in a bib bib text format, and you have the reference for the method immediately. It also provides you a summary. So you select all these boxes. You have a summary here, you have a summary here, trying to resemble the methods. It would not be enough, but at least you have a skeleton of what you've done for, for the paper. Um, so now moving on to traceability and reproducibility. So this um, actual... Uh, image processing done within a CPM. And they look like this. You start with something simple, some movie alignment, CTF estimation, blah, blah. And then here, it, it starts to branch out. 
And probably it's a clean one because you try different options, different parameters, and some many of them doesn't work. You don't get the, the right result. Maybe you delete them. So probably it's a clean one. Um, but you can see this. This has uh, lots of, of options. Um, you can establish your, your labels, so you can specify labels and, and color them. So this will be more on the practical side. I think these are more 2D classification. Here we're moving into 3D. Um, and I think these guys are more resolution stuff. But uh, this just up to you to organize your, your, your workflow. Um, so everything is recorded. And all the logs, the output for each of these methods are carefully kept. So you can click on any of these boxes and you will see you will see the log, the output of Relion or whatever method is being involved. Um, it will be here, among with uh, other stuff that uh, Reli uh, Citron does. Um, that workflow can be can be exported or imported. So with with one click, you can export that. Uh, we create a um, text file in a JSON format, which is like something readable, but also easy to to read by our program. Um, and also easy to view on a browser. Um, we recently did a, a collaboration with Empire in the context of a EOC pilot, and we work on submitting to Empire directly from ECP. So this is one of those boxes. You can add that, that boxes, and you can add some parameters, and um, the workflow will be submitted to Empire with the movies or the micrographs, depending on what you want to send. Um, so what actually would be important would be the, the JSON describing your your steps and also the data. Yeah. And I did this last week. Um, so this how sorry this is how you can view the workflow. If we have um HTML component you can easily plug into your website and you can view the workflow uh, easily. And the idea for the submission, this was the first submission we did uh, in summer. It wasn't public yet, but it became public recently. And uh, you can see, yeah, <laughs> so here you have the um, JSON, the workflow JSON file I was talking about. So now you have your the Empire data associated with your ENTB entry, but you have a, a nice description of what has been done to get that uh, map. And this, in terms of reporting and describing your work, we think is very useful. Um, so I had to make this up because this wasn't ready. So the entry didn't have this option yet. But last last Friday, Andrew from from ENDB, he he just uh, sent me the the link, and now it's available. So if you go now to this entry at the Empire. You will see somewhere here, you will see a second workflow or something with a link. That will pop up a window, and you will see the work, this uh, workflow there in the, in, in the Empire website. So, um, about integration. Uh, we know that a Scipion is not alone, so it's, it's in a context, it's in a facility, and, and you, when you run a facility, you have many other uh, information there. You have to, you have maybe your booking system, you have, uh, you have your users, maybe you have a user, um, um, user management uh, software, whatever, yeah? Um, so we, dis we, we designed a CPN as a, it, it's written in Python and it's a, it's fully operatable from, from a script. And you can do everything that is done through the GUI that you, you, you can see that, uh, uh, that you can do through the, you can do it from a, from a program. Yeah. Um, 
Also, you can customize all your own boxes there that they will do whatever you want to do. Obviously, this requires some develop, development skills, programming. And this is what has been done in ESRF. They are already sending data processed by, with a CPN. I think uh, Chris uh, they just uh, mentioned this. So data has been processed uh, by a CPN and, and then it's sent out to the, the system. Uh, some images and stats. Uh, and this is, I just saw this from some slides that are publicly available somewhere about an SPID site or something. And this is something at Diamond. No, uh, yeah, I think there's something at Um So this value of CTF, astigmatism, and all that is coming from the system. This data as well. So I finished here about the CPN features, and now I'm going to talk a bit about um, how we run a CPN at the CMD. So we have now a, a Talos Artica. Uh, this is our building. And this is like a context that I don't think is special to us, but it's generic. It might be generic somehow to all of us here. Um, so we are concerned about security. We have a microscope. Soon we will have a, a Titan Cryos. It was announced that we will buy one. Uh, then we have somehow a booking system. This could be an Excel spreadsheet or whatever you have. Um, and then you have your IT infrastructure. You have your data storage. You have your, your network. And maybe you, you want to assign somewhere else because your network is private and you, <coughs> you want to view your data or allow the users to view your data. So you have all these kind of uh, actors in your in your context of the facility. You have also you have also the billing department, um, and now we know that the CPN does image processing, but there is some overlap with all of this data somehow. Um, so in our case, uh, we have developed a, a, what is called EM admin. It manages users. It is aware of the directory structure where the, the, the movies are going to appear when you start acquisition. Um, it's aware of the acquisition setup. And, and it's also aware of, of the CPN reporting, where the CPN plays the report. Um, it gathers facility statistics for some values like the focus and resolution, I think. Um, and it offers a, a, a workflow, so when you want to run an acquiring session, you can you can choose which workflow you want to use. And this is this JSON file I mentioned later. So you can have different templates. You choose your workflow, and then you have that workflow ready to run in your uh, after the acquisition. It also launches CPM. So this would be. A bit uh, more detail about the pipeline. So obviously you have worked on before this. You you prepare the sample, you prepare the grid, everything. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to go into those details because I'm bad at that. Um, but then you have your they use EPU there, and then you define the acquisition. What well, you work on the atlas, and you you define the parameters. At the same time, you need to have the user register in this. Uh, this site in the at the EM admin, and then at some point you start acquisition. So you tell the people start acquisition with these parameters. Yeah. So I have decided to go to this the focus range or whatever uh, this sampling range, uh, and then the movies start to appear in this X Y Z folder. Yeah. Um, at the same time, EM admin needs to know about this. Yeah, because the admin is going to kick off a CPN, but it needs to tell the CPN where these movies are going to appear, but also some of the decisions that were made here, like what is going to be the sampling rate, uh, the dose, or some other values that, um, that you, you have decided here, and the CPN needs to know. Yeah. So the user that just register, just... Uh, Somehow, I think this is not automatic, so the user needs to enter the values that were defined here. 
except for these ones that are matching the so the folder matches the user and the project name something like that there's a synchronization in this between the em admin and this folder and so when the the user registers the new project and tells the em admin that uh, the acquisition has started then the, the em admin is capable of launching the cpn using this json approach and just with all the values decided here. And it's able to, to obviously read this folder, to start importing the movies, and work with them. Um, with the time, the CPU will generate an HTML report that will be asynced to the public web server that sits outside this secure, securized network. Oh, sorry, I just missed this part. Um, and then the the, the EM admin is um, scanning the CPN uh, data to gather some statistics about resolution and the focus. So you can have a plot over time about this, um, how it has shifted or how it has changed the, the resolution or the focus values. <coughs> so current status, um, this is regarding facilities. We have uh, invested the last, I would say, the last two years in creating or designing this uh, um, streaming functionality to work in facilities. And we have made the effort to, to support facilities and, 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 and try to have a second run in there. Um, so I think this map. Uh, so in green you will see those facilities that CPN is running in production. Um, this in yellow. Okay, this might be outdated. There's someone here that runs a CPN. Just um, <laughs> because. Uh, uh, so we we discovered recently when we shared this map that someone here, I think this was Virginia University, um, they were running the CPN smoothly in production, and we weren't aware of that. So for us, it's nice to know that. Who is running the secret and which color are, are they? And some of them are just day express interests like um, Stanford University and, and Brazil as well. Uh, but this is just conversations. Um, in terms of users, you can see a map. This is on our website. You, so you can go to the secret site and, and, and check this. Um, it's hard to identify users, so we identify projects. So one project is one workflow, and, and a user can create many projects. So what you see here are projects, but not users. Yeah? We are trying to filter out test data. So we are de as developers, we do many tests, and we create a new project, and we don't want that project to be counted here. Uh, we are aware that in some cases, obviously not those in Spain, because we know who in Spain is doing this, but there are some developers like this Taiwanese guy there, the, I don't know, probably he's reporting this stuff. Uh, that's how we, we, we show that uh, there was some, someone working on, working on Isaac too. But these are projects. Um, and because we are collecting this small set of statistics, we can also plot, like, uh, what is the usage by type? So here is 2D classification, and we have a, a bar chart about this one is um, Reliant to the classification. Uh, this is Reliant. Okay. So you can see uh, which one is most used within the CPN, obviously. Yeah. Um, we have over 3,500 projects. Uh, we believe this is a subset. Uh, we believe not everyone is reporting. But obviously, we don't know how many are not reporting. Uh, also, this is over time. So this is since we started to collect the statistics. So it's accumulating data. Yeah, I'm not saying that we have 3,500 projects uh, open and, and live now. Yeah. Um, for us, uh, the geographic use and what is used is important because 
at some point we might decide to discontinue the development of some method. I don't know. Because it's not it's never used and I don't know. We detect an error but no one is using it. Why 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 continue? And also this could be used as a defining the training. So I would say is what to invest training in those countries that are already using the CPL. Or maybe the other way around, I don't know. So um just to sorry, I'm late. Um yeah, this is the last one, sorry. Uh so as a summary, we can do a streaming processing. We we keep uh, we are strong in, in keeping the traceability and reproducibility, and you can have the full workflow. You know, you can start from 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 a movie alignment, and you can finish with a sharpening, or you will soon start seeing doing some uh, modeling in, in the CPL as well. Um, it has a full API, so it's programmable, so you can automate the CPL, uh, integrating your facility. You have connectivity or the chance to, to make your connect with your limb system or integrate it to your uh, ecosystem in your facility. And it integrates all the EM packages smoothly, so it gives you a lot of possibilities. Yeah. It's extensible, so new methods will be in the field will appear. So I'm sure next year there will be a new method. Who knows who develop it, but uh, we will have it probably. Um, it's aware of GPUs, clusters, and queues, although this has to be improved, but, but it's already running in, in, in and interacting with GPUs, clusters, and queues. Uh, it's citation aware. Um, you can customize your workflow without coding. You can't just drag and drop and decide uh, without the need of programming. And it's resumable as well, so you can stop, continue, that is something that from a script it is a problem. Um, to be honest, we have some problems here and we will work on this uh, for the next release to make it even more resumable. And we also think we have a strong support. So we have an email channel, we have a private Slack channel for the facilities. So it's like a, you don't know Slack, it's like a chat room. So we all the developers are there and you have any question, you will have an answer probably on the same day. Um, the team is a large team, so this is uh, the Madrid um, Image uh, Processing Center. So it's led by Maria Carato, but uh, these are all the people working. Half of them are ex-MIT guys, but they are improving the CPM as well, so that's why they are listed there. Um, we see people from Sailai Lab, McGill University is also contributing to CPM. Gregory Sharoff and Joaquin uh, Oton, they are, he recently moved to MRC, and there are others, and probably I should increase this list because we just need to be more, um, I mean, there are people contributing, and it's not us, it's just, uh, so this Taiwanese guy probably should be here, but uh, I only know his uh, GitHub uh, alias. <laughs> and just an old friend, these are our people, People involved, funding agency, and, and, and also the second team and collaborate. Sorry for the delay. Thank you. Thank you. Time for one question. Yes. I have a very naive question. Um, you mentioned consensus. For yeah. example, you can use different picking programs. Then look which particles do they all choose the same. How far could you continue with this? Could you use then all different CTF estimation programs, build an average from this, and so on, and uh, in the end get kind of like an, an average from all the averages you have? Well, to be honest, uh, I mentioned the possibilities. Possibilities are huge. So you can, I don't know, it's probably um, unknown how. how I would say it's infinite the, the ways you can combine. For the for the picking, you can um, obviously the, the particles are are um, you know they're not associated, associated with the CTF. So you, you can pick the particles and and then you can decide to to get the so you have two options to either 
be relaxed and, and get all the particles that all the picking have picked before you go you can go to the other uh, side of the spectra and will be just pick me only those that uh, that are equal or are picking in two or three pickers. Uh, and is it how then how you identify that one particle is the same as the other? You have also a parameter there like uh, which radius you consider the same to be the same particle. So you put zero, zero there, it's like, okay, it has to be exact. Um, but yeah, the, the possibilities are, I think, are endless. Uh, 